Hello, hello. Today, learners of physics, we are going to uh, conduct an experiment to determine the resistivity of a metal wire. All right. So just a recap for you, the equation for resistivity looks like this. Okay. And we, we are probably going to plot a graph to decide what the value of rho is. All right. So let's follow the experiment. Step one, measure and record the diameter of the wire attached to a card. So it may not give you a sample of a wire attached to a card. So what you can do is you can measure the actual, re actual wire that is here. So that is what we would like to measure now. Okay. So before I begin, we are going to use a, a micrometer. So let me uh, bloop away this one first. Okay, we're going to use a micrometer like this one to measure the diameter of the wire. But we need to first see whether there's a zero error. So as and when my camera decides to focus. The struggle is real, guys. The camera is like us. It just cannot focus. Pause now. Take zero error. Okay, pause now, take zero error. It's pretty small zero error. It's not that big. It's just one interval. Okay, so now I'm going to measure the diameter of the wire in front of me, but I will measure it on several parts lah, because maybe the wire isn't uniform. Okay, and uh, of course this one would probably incur a large percentage uncertainty. Okay, so let me adjust the setting a bit. Okay, so you can see this is the reading of the first diameter. Number one, number one. So you can pause the recording and take this reading. Pause the recording and take this reading. I will readjust and take a second position on the same wire. Okay, so this is the first reading for D. Okay, I'm gonna continue. Uh, I want this to fit in the frame, so just so that you can feel my suffering. Joking, joking, but not really. Quite nice, right? At home, you see your teacher struggle to record, but you just get to take the reading. So I hope that you learn something, okay? Don't just passively stone out. All right, so there we go, leaving that part in. Okay, so I'm now measuring at a different length with more or less the same tightness. Okay, so this is the second reading. Don't forget to subtract your zero error. Second reading for D. You can pause the video and take the recording if you want. All right, and I think maybe I'll take another one. kind of hard to make sure it's inside. That's what she said. Sorry, children. Dun, dun, dun. If you don't get it, it's fine. <laughs> Aha! Okay, we got it. Oh, it looks so anticlimactically Sorry, children. The same. Just show that you have evidence of repeated data, especially for this kind of circular diameter things. It's good to have repeated data, even if the data is the same. All right. So that is that for this uh, diameter measurement. So if you are doing this on the on the in real life, you look at all this. Wow, I cannot even see my wire. Okay, so this is the wire. You see all these weird kinks. So what I'll do is I will normally pull on. Press down and pull on this end uh, just to make sure. Of course, if you want, you can measure the diameter here as well in the lab. But um, I don't want to because I can't get this thing to focus. Okay, so that's it for the measurement of diameter. You have three readings. You can take the average. Um, two is also good enough, generally speaking. 
But when even if it's question one, I will always suggest that you take average for the first reading. Especially if it's like non-uniform shapes like this. Lah. Okay. So the next part, let's look at our lab manual. Okay, so calculate the cross-sectional area A of the wire. Lah, you know what to do, lah, okay? Just make sure you don't lose marks. Look at the unit, look at the SF, you know all those things. Alright, and here, what we have is a DC power supply. We're going to connect the circuit once again. So remember what I said or what we learned from uh, set 6, because this is, this is set 7 already. So what we learn here is that the, uh, why is it again? We're going to go number one. We're going to start from supply. And number two, we do loop by loop. All right. So now we're going to start from, let's say this is the positive terminal, because normally we will start from the right side. I mean, the left side. It's really up to you. So I'm going to travel from the battery, enter this point, and notice that there are three branches. One is going into the resistor R. So you have a bunch of resistors labeled R here. No, 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 here. I'm holding one now. Okay. Um, the other one will go into the meter rule that's connected to the wire. And the other one is going to be connected directly to the voltmeter. Wow, there are three things to connect. Okay, so I guess we better get started. All right, so I'm going to close this one. Okay, there we go. Okay, so from the battery, we're going to connect to three different things. The first one is the resistor R. You can refer to your lab manual, although it's not here in front of you. So this is the resistor R, and we will connect this to the end of the wire. This the R we put here, okay, and then from here, hey, sorry, we connect to the end of this one, and then we're gonna connect to the resistor R. My bad. Wire R and meter. Okay. Well, let's not mess up my wires. That is no good. Okay. To here's a tip for you. If you're thinking everything also you want to connect from here, this is going to stress out the wire a lot because this one is not a very stable connection. So what I'll do is I will connect from the power supply because this whole thing is the same wire. Ma. Huh? If it's the same wire, again, it doesn't matter whether I connect here or here. It's the same thing. So I'm going to be a bit uh, aggressive. Not more than usual, just a little bit more by adjusting the connection a bit so that I can clamp down here. And this can connect directly to my <laughs> I show you la. Okay, so this is all quite tight. I'm pushing it a bit, it doesn't move. To clamp down the power supply. Alright. And uh this one will be connected to one of the resistor R, let's say this one. Okay, again I have already pre-measured all these things to make sure that they are functioning. You should as well because you don't want some random error to happen. Uh, and then your result don't know what happened. Okay, so I have connected the battery to R and the battery to the wire. And finally, it will be battery to the voltmeter. My voltmeter is here. Okay, battery, battery. There we go. Where to put this? Let's see. I am going to place this red wire. Ding ding. So you could clamp it here. If you think here is already overpopulated. Okay, so I kind of like left this as an option. It's really up to you. As long as, again, you know why? Because it's the same wire. So it doesn't matter. So I think I'll clamp this here. But I'm very scared I pull too much, then it will move too much. Okay, okay, I put here. Mm, triple stack. Okay. No harm, no foul. This is done. Okay. So now I am ready. By the way, all this kind of thing is not ideal. Let me show you. Not ideal. But I want to, I just need a tight connection. And this is way more stable than this here at the wire. 
Okay, we're done. Now let's look at the second part of the circuit. Okay, so we have connected all three. Power supply to resistor, power supply to this one, power supply to this one. So now, now it's time to end things loop by loop. Let's start with the resistor loop. So from the resistor, we are going to connect all the way back to a second resistor. Oh yeah, this is very annoying because you see, uh, this one must be at the same point. And you must also have another clamp coming up from here. So my idea is I will use one of these uh, nails on the resistor R to be this meeting point here. Because this is much a much more stable point. Make sense? Okay, so now I'm going to... I know I said loop by loop, but just because of the way they are drawing, although I'm tracing, I'm trying to trace this loop now. Positive to R this one going back can uh, you can connect this loop first mom, if you want to okay so I'm going to connect this part first let me bloop away the display okay so from positive this is the positive this is the R and from R I want to go back to the other R. So this is my other R. I'm going to take a black one, okay, to connect this way to R. And then we're on the journey of return. So from R, I'll connect back to the power supply. Okay, so R back to the supply. Just do loop by loop. Lah. I'm overthinking things as the way I am. <laughs> okay, lie. Power supply. Power supply. This wire going to first R and then going to second R and then go back to negative. Okay, so this is what we see. Bloop. Wire. Going to first R, I'm doing the yellow loop. Huh? Going to second R, return back to supply. Well done. Okay, now time to do the meter rule. So for the meter rule, let's say I color this blue. This is the one that will go from. Of course, you're gonna you want to check. You can check from the supply. We're gonna curve off my ourselves all the way, like this here. So from the meter rule, or oh, there's another crocodile clamp that I need to clamp. But it is before we meet R. So this one, this loop must include the second R. Not the first R, but just the second R. On the circuit, it looks very nice. On the drawing, it looks very nice and organized. But in real life, oh, <laughs> GG. GG, let me show you. Okay. So again, I just remember power supply to wire, middle of the wire to resistor, back to power supply. Supply, wire, resistor, supply. Supply, wire, resistor, supply. Let's go. So this is the supply. The grey wire, the one underneath here, is connected to the uh, wire on the ruler. Supply, and then connected to the this wire on the ruler. And then somewhere in the middle, we should have a clip. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use black again. Not because we always bet on black, <laughs> but because... Uh, to follow the current convention, uh, current exiting here. So I'm going to clip it somewhere in the middle. doesn't really matter. I can adjust the length. So I always try to choose a clamp that can give me a good connection, especially when the wire is so thin. Uh. Okay, so this one is good. And this other end of this connector here, this one here. Okay, the other end of this one here should be connected before the second resistor. So the... This neon green is the first resistor. White is the second resistor. So we should connect this, connect this before, not after. How you know where is before after? Again, follow. So I'm going to move some things away so you can see. Look at my pen. We'll follow from this one. 
this connection underneath here is connected to this wire. You see, you see? Connected to this wire. Okay? From the wire now, we will trace all the way to the clamp. So let me show you this part first. Power supply connected to wire. Wire connected to clamp. Clamp connected to second R connected to power supply. Let's check. The clamp connected to the second resistor and then connected to the power supply. All right. Okay, beautiful. We have done that. What is the last one to loop our good old power supply? So let us check out our power supply and see how it looks like. Uh, so the power supply now is the third one, but power supply is also connected before R. Okay, so it's as simple as power supply to voltmeter to R to power supply. So we're going to do this loop now. Change color. Okay. I'm going to go here. Oh, like this. Okay. Going back here and then back to the power supply. So if you want to do this one, okay, we're going to go from positive to the voltmeter, voltmeter to the resistor to the negative. All right. So let's see how that looks like on your table. Okay. So power supply to the voltmeter. Okay, this red wire is connected to the voltmeter now. Nah. Okay, not sure if you need that verification. So connected to the voltmeter. And this other end of the voltmeter will be connected to before the second resistor. Okay, so right here. So this is what I mean by I will take this as my common connection point than anywhere else because this is a pretty great terminal to but you make sure everything is tight. La. All three clamps are tight. Okay, it is not, not like this. This is not tight. See? See? Because you put it in between the hole of the crocodile clamp. Okay, this is not tight. Tight would be to clamp it down this way. Alright. Okay, so I think we're good. And uh, I have a beautiful reading already, already, so this is very promising. Although I totally don't know what length I should choose. Okay, so let us just uh, bloop out the circuit again for us to double check. Okay, so we have connected all this. Remember to check loop by loop. Okay, so I will try to shrink this a bit so we can still check. Okay, so power supply is... Okay, let me pull this here. Alright, so let's see. Power supply to first resistor to second resistor back to power supply okay so follow my pen if you don't know how to check all you ask for examiner to uh supervisor or lecturer to help you they can minus your mark lah. okay so from power supply coming out and also if you intend to do engineering learn to check lah, okay coming out to the first resistor r entering the second resistor r and then returning, 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 returning to the power supply. So the first loop is good. Good. Okay, second loop. Power supply to meter rule, halfway meter rule, short circuit to R and go back to power supply. So the bottom gray wire, power supply, this one is connected to the meter rule. Nah, connected to the meter rule. And then halfway in the meter rule is this one. Okay, this is halfway in the meter rule. This will connect to the resistor. Okay, so everything is before the resistor. Then our current will pass through this resistor, go back into the negative terminal. Okay, same thing with voltmeter. Voltmeter is the middle red wire connected to the power supply. 
So you can see voltmeter actually came from the power supply. And then after that, the other end will be connected to the resistor, the black wire. Okay? So this black wire is also from the voltmeter. And then to the resistor, back to the power supply. So this is what I mean by loop by loop. You'll notice that my reading has dropped a bit. Lah. This is partially because, again, when you just measure the current, they can get all sorts of problems. So I would prefer if I adjust my wire. Let me organize the table a bit, and then we can start to take our first reading, BRB. Okay, we're back. I have uh, moved out as much wires as I can from obstructing your view of this uh, meter rule. I'm going to keep the voltmeter here so you will still get the voltmeter connection. Nah, I can't change that. All right, so what we'll do is we will change the value of L by moving this crocodile clip. You know, it used to be somewhere in the middle here. One. Okay, so uh, we will measure L. So this is the value of L. From the end of the ruler, so on this side will be one zero cm. If you're reading this scale, lah, okay. So from this side will be zero cm until wherever I touch. So like for example, for this one, your L is 43. Okay, so now we are going to measure and record the length. Position the crocodile clip Y approximately halfway along the wire. So we want this to be halfway. So where is halfway? Uh, halfway is 50, right? So I'm going to put this, I guess, try to put it exactly as 50. Okay, so this is 50. And you can take your first reading of L and V. So this is the voltmeter reading in volts, in volts, where it is at 50, okay? And to prevent the circuit from overheating, I will work faster. Lah. All right, so we're going to continue the experiment. And it says that by moving the crocodile clip, by the way, if you're wondering what I just did, I disconnected the circuit so that this one can chill a bit. Chill, chill, don't heat up. By removing the crocodile, by moving the crocodile clip Y, change the length L and repeat B part 2 until you have six readings of L and V. Your L must be greater than or equal to 20. Okay, so since we talk about range, uh, again, no way for you to actually know whether you will make this mistake because I am actually taking data for you. So hopefully before I say this line, you would think that, okay, my L should be as big as at least... 90 lah. If can, you reach 100. Okay, so this L in CM, uh, I'm going to start with 20.0, 30 0, 40.0, 50.0, 60.0, 70.0, 80.0. And I think I'll end with 90.0, just to be safe. Do you need that many reading? No, you only need 6, but you need to make sure that the range is big. Okay, so I will just tell you, or I will try to show the both the meter rule and also the voltmeter for you. Okay, but we already have one reading, which is this one, 50. So we can use 50 now, all right? So what is left here is to do the rest. Okay, so I think the first thing I'll do is I will start, I will go from 20 all the way to 40, okay? So I'm going to move this one a bit here so you can... C I don't have a very big table. Okay, so let's see. I need okay, I'm gonna first uh reconnect the circuit or rather close the switch. Okay, and then I'll put this at 20 cm. So the reason why we want these numbers to be integers or as close as integer as possible is so that it's easier to plot graph law, my friends. Okay, so this is 20 cm. 20 cm. All right, we're going to repeat again for 30 cm. This is 30 cm. 30 cm. All right, repeat again for 40. Making sure the connection is there. Okay, so this is 40 cm. 40 cm. 40 cm. Okay, I'm going to continue. I uh, might as well I do 50 again uh, just to double check. Okay, so this is 50 cm. So obviously there's a change in reading uh, <laughs> because as it gets hotter, things will change. So this is 50 cm. 
okay, 5, 0 cm. The answer in front, the answer at the back, no, the same can, uh, can, can. Don't worry about it. As long as you plot the answer that is in your table. So this is 50 cm. I'm going to quickly move on to 60, bearing in mind that the faster I do the experiment, the better my data will be. So this is 60 cm. 60. 60 cm. Okay, I'm going to move on to 70. Okay, so this is 70 cm. You can double check. La. If you don't think where my clamp is at 70, then you write low whatever you think the length is. Okay, 70 cm. Two more to go. 80. 80 cm is here. Yeah, okay, so this is 80. Okay, 80. 80 cm for L. And finally, last but not least, we will go 90. 100, a bit hard. La. I guess I can put, I can give you a 100 or so. Hang on. This is 90. 90. Okay, you can see from the scale and also from the bitter reading. This is 90. And I guess just to round things off. Hang on, this one needs to come here a bit, so got space to move. All right, 100, I will take the very end of this now, okay? Try my best to put it at the end. Okay, fine. Now, if you want to, I have another reading for 100. So I suggest the 51, you take the reading as I'm going along the ruler. That way, your trend will be more stable. Okay? All right, so we got that 100, and as you can see, it will drop one over time, although I didn't touch anything. So this is a fairly straightforward experiment because we know that uh, resistance and length has a pre pretty linear relationship. The only reason why uh, the increase seems to be decreasing, so every time you increase 10 cm, this one seems to not increase 10 cm, is simply because you have all these other resistors here. La. Okay, and what are their roles? Well, I'll let you figure out la, that part. Okay, so go and plot your graph. All right, and continue the experiment. You know what to do with the data. Okay, plot your graph and, you know, based on the equation that's given to you, you can find M and N. And then from here, from some strange equation, you can calculate the resistivity. Just use the equation. Don't ask questions unless you're very free and you want to derive. All right, so that's it for this circuit experiment. You can see this one is still dropping. Good luck with your graph. I will see you in question two. If you find this helpful, uh, please share the video with your friends. Okay, learn together. La. You can watch this together. Have a viewing party. Netflix lab party. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Good luck with your lab. Good luck with your graph. I hope you get a straight line. Bye-bye.